What's happening, guys? About Nagpal for Ig Android, and and today we're going to be checking out the full review of the new iBerry Oxus Nuclear N1. Now, this is a MediaTek 6589T based uh, device. It is a quad core chipset and runs at 1.5 gigahertz. It also has a full HD display out in the front. So let's talk about the build quality. The overall build quality of the Oxus Nuclear N1 is fairly fantastic. In fact, once you hold the device, you're quite happy with the build quality that you won't even need a back cover. And even if you do damage the back cover, the company has been kind enough to include four replaceable panels so that if you do damage your back cover, you can simply swap it out with a new one. We personally prefer the white and red colors, uh, but if you are overly metrosexual, you can try out the pink. And if you are old school, you can try out the black. Now the front also has a Gorilla Glass display, which is really fingerprint friendly. The company does include a anti-fingerprint screen protector, which does not cover the full screen, uh, but it does a fairly good job of being anti-fingerprint. On the back, you have a 13 megapixel camera, and on the front, you have an eight megapixel camera, of which we'll talk about in just some time. The overall feel and finish of the device is really good, and it feels really robust in the hand. The buttons are metallic. In fact, they are metal buttons, uh, but they are joined to the cover. So every time you do switch the cover, you do also switch the buttons, which is a kind of a nice thing. Let's talk a little bit about the hardware on the device. So on the inside, you have a MediaTek 65890 chipset. Uh, it's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. You have the PowerVR SGX544 MP GPU. You have one gigabyte of RAM and four gigabyte of inbuilt storage out of which you get about 2.5 gigabyte free. You have a 2800 milliamp hour battery. The display is a five inch 1920 by 1080p active matrix display. It's a kind of technology that is utilized. And you also have one glass solution. That means the Gorilla Glass on front and the LCD are fused together. Uh, you can expand the device's memory uh, up to 64 gigabyte. If you talk about the cameras, the back camera is 13 megapixel, front camera is eight megapixel, both capable of 1080p video. We could not get the front camera to do autofocus. We believe that it's fixed focus. If you swap right from the lock screen, you directly jump into the camera. The camera is fairly nice at focus. In fact, it focuses slightly better than most of the devices available in this price segment. Uh, you can also do close-up focuses, and uh, which is really nice. We saw that outdoor macro focuses were not that great, and we weren't able to get uh, good quality images uh, when we shot a subject which was up close and personal. But a little bit of tinkering around with the focus uh, will allow you to take pictures. Here are some of the sample pictures that we took uh, with the device's camera and also a sample video for your taste buds. Now coming back into the camera, you have a normal shooting mode, an HDR mode, which allows you to take HDR pictures. You also have a beauty face or a beauty shot mode. Uh, you have panorama uh, or multi-angle view image, uh, it's called. Uh, you also have auto scene detection. You also have smile detection. You also have best shot mode and uh, you can also adjust EV bracket shots. You can also go into the full settings. You can switch to the front camera from the top right and go into the full settings to change different uh, settings for the camera, including white balance, exposure, etc. You can also set up continuous shooting, which does 40 pictures. You have electronic image stabilization for video. You can turn on uh, the microphone and you can also do time-lapse shooting, which is really, really nice. The interface also allows you to edit images, but when we tried to do that with the included look away player from Oxus, it almost always crashed and it didn't work. The native gallery app was able to edit images, add filters and do the rest of the magic that Google allows you to do in Jelly Bean. However, the inbuilt look away player almost always crashed. Now, if you take a look at the user interface, it's almost always a stock UI. You don't have a lot of customizations. You have your stock apps, uh, the browser is shaped like a strawberry, the icon, so that doesn't work well. If we go into the Lookaway Player directly and go into the camera, again, when we open up the Lookaway Player photo editor, it crashes. So uh, we don't know if that's a generic problem or a problem with our device, but it did happen. 
every time we opened it up for editing photographs. Now you do have file managers, uh, you do have root explorers, uh, root file managers, etc. because the device does come rooted and it works fairly well uh, with the fact that it is rooted. You can access all your database files, your root files, your uh, root folders, edit settings, modify settings, which is really good uh, for users who like to play around with their devices a lot. If you go into the browser, you'll see that it is a fantastic display on this device and it works really well uh, on the device. Especially if you're browsing websites, uh, the display will really come in handy uh, because the text shows up really crisp. The display is really nice. Viewing angles are great. Uh, you'll really enjoy the display on the device. Now, as you can see, you have Android Jelly Bean and you can quickly jump into toggles and switch away from uh, settings. Uh, you can also look at the notification panel over here and uh, remove your notifications one by one or you can simply tap on this button over here to remove all notifications. Now, unlike other devices, one touch clean when you hold down on the multitasking does not remove uh, the running applications. And if you click on the task manager, it actually takes you to running services, which is a standard Android app. It does not allow you to quit running applications. So you'll have to quit all the running applications one by one. The browser, like I said, is really fast and responsive, works really well. You can pinch in and pinch out. Text is absolutely crisp. And uh, the overall responsiveness from the browser is great. So as far as internet is concerned, online uh, performance is concerned, the iBerry Oxus Nuclear N1 will not disappoint. Now the multitasking button on the bottom right is actually a menu button. It looks like a multitasking button, but it's actually a menu button. So anywhere on the device, if you tap that button, it takes you to the menu. Holding down on the home button brings up the multitasking panel and if you double tap on the home button it brings up the multi-page dashboard. You cannot access Google Now directly, in fact Google Now doesn't even come installed on the device, you have to download it uh, from the Google Play Store. Now the device performs fairly nicely in day-to-day -day processes, you'll see almost little or no lag while using the device in day-to-day -day usage. Uh, scrolling through pages, dashboards, etc. is fairly fast and responsive and we did not see the device slow down despite the fact that we installed quite a lot of apps on it. Uh, the dialer is stock and a very generic looking dialer. No customizations done there by iBerry and uh, you can see that all your favorites show up with images, etc. If you go into the keyboard, you'll see very stock looking keyboard. Again, you can replace the keyboard with any keyboard from uh, the Google Play Store including Swipe so you have access to all those things. Uh, but very stock in terms of interface, you have zero customizations, just a little bit of the apps installed by iBerry, uh, which is actually a good thing. We actually like that. Now, if you go into video player and if we play a video in the look away video player, it actually works really well. So let me start up the video and the minute I start to look at the device, uh, it shows you a little bit of information over here, how it pauses when you look away from it. Uh, once you look at the device, it starts to play. The minute you look away, it pauses. And now I'm looking away, it pauses. If I look at the device again, it starts to play. So it's very instantaneous. It's almost instant. It actually responds immediately. It uses the camera to sense where you're looking. And the minute you look away from the screen, it pauses. So if I turn the phone around or if I turn my face around, uh, the device will pause. Uh, which is fairly good. It can be really useful for people who would like to use this feature. You can also turn off uh, the retina sensor or uh, the eye sensing uh, from the top right. Uh, there is a small button that allows you to do that. So if you go into the top right, uh, you can turn off uh, the eye sensing and then it'll automatically uh, continue to play the video. Now this is a video that we captured on the device itself. Uh, we'll, we'll show you what it looks like. Now once you're playing videos, it actually makes the buttons on the bottom uh, stop responding, which is actually a good thing. So in case you accidentally do tap on that button, it'll not work. You have something called Wave Control Pro. Uh, now this is a third party application that comes pre-installed. It allows you to control gestures on your device. So you have lots of options uh, during call control, uh, vibration, you can have app exit settings, limited modes, etc. All these things can be set up according to your requirements. So it basically uses gestures to control your device. Again, with the use of uh, the proximity sensor along with the front camera, you can just wave your hand across the screen and uh, set up gestures for changing 
uh, pictures in the gallery for answering phone calls, etc. Uh, we tried out this feature. It's slightly gimmicky, but it works. So for those people who like to uh, do gestures with their devices, um, this app will allow you to control a lot of things uh, with just gestures. In fact, this app will give you a lot more flexibility than even Samsung does. Now, like we said earlier, the device comes pre-routed. That gives you access to a lot of uh, file information on the inside of the device. So in case some game is not installing, you can go into uh, root access, change the ID of the device to something like a Galaxy S4, and uh, the game that doesn't work right now will start to download onto your device. Now, these are things that you should only play with once you are aware of what root is going to do to your device. It can damage your device if you uh, play around with the root explorer a lot. So for a layman, a person who does not know what the root is doing, uh, giving a rooted device may actually backfire for iBerry. Uh, so we're not too happy with that. You do get something called a super compass, uh, which is pretty accurate. Uh, it does locate the north from where I am pretty accurately, it's slightly off the north position, but it's more or less accurate. Now, the compass also works uh, when within Google Maps as well. I'll just demonstrate that. As you can see, when you move the device, uh, the arrow on the screen also moves. That means uh, that the compass is inbuilt and you'll get turn by turn uh, directions as and when the device is actually following the path on the map. So it can be really good for people who use their devices for navigation a lot. Now, while using the device, we did feel that it heated up from around the camera area at the back. It gets slightly warm after usage. Uh, if you are playing games a lot, it gets really warm. It's not hot as per se, but it gets really, really warm and it can get uncomfortable to hold, especially if you're holding a device in uh, landscape mode. Now, overall, in terms of performance, uh, we saw that the device scored almost average. We weren't too happy with the overall benchmark scores. And if you're going to be doing gaming, we will not recommend this device to you guys because gaming does not work uh, really well. You can, you can run games like Dead Trigger. You can run games like Virtual Tennis. They work fantastic. And in fact, if you're going to run games like Real Racing, um, like we showed in our previous video, Real Racing, Nova 3, and Asphalt 7, if you want to run games like those, they will also run, but provided you have only one of those games installed. Now, we did see a lot of people telling us that we uh, downranked the games, we somehow managed to manipulate the video. And in fact, uh, we're not too even sure if uh, people from iBerry got back to us on YouTube saying that the devices were actually, uh, we are trying to downrank uh, their devices. Uh, unfortunately, at iGAN, we don't do that, and people who believe otherwise are allowed to have their own opinion. iGAN tests every device, and our job is to ensure that you guys know that uh, if a device does not perform well, you guys know it for sure. If you don't believe us, the best way to believe is to buy the device yourself and uh, test it out for yourself. Maybe we got a device that doesn't work properly. Maybe we have received a device. But if somebody reaches out to us, and if that company reaches out to us and says that we are defaming them, then I wouldn't recommend that company at all because of the simple fact that we do our job in the most perfect manner and whatever is right according to us. And if a company has the ability to come down to such petty levels, then that company is actually not a professional company and then we would actually recommend that you stay away from that company. But if it's actually some users, some buyers who are hating on us for uh, making this video, then it is unfortunate for them because they are just hating on us because they bought the device and they feel uh, that they wasted their money or whatever the reason is. The fact is that this device does not do gaming well and there's no reason that I will only carry one heavy game on my device. So if I want to play real racing, if I want to play asphalt, if I want to play Nova 3, I want to play them all together or one by one, doesn't matter. If I have them all installed on my device, they should work well. And the matter of fact is that on the Oxus Nuclear N1, they don't work well. The, the device itself, in conclusion, is a great device. In fact, the full HD display is fantastic. The rear camera, the front camera, fantastic, really nice. Uh, the front camera does not do autofocus, which is uh, sort of a bad thing. You can tap, you can do whatever, but it does not do autofocus. It did not in our case. So if your device does, then there is a lot of disparity between devices. And that is something we do not appreciate from a company as well. 
Another thing to note is that Full HD video is fairly shaky even with the EIS turned on. Uh, this is something that people who would like to shoot video would like to know. In day-to-day -day usage, the device does not slow down, which is a good thing. The battery life is fantastic. We got about five to six hours of talk time on this, uh, which is better than most of the devices in the market. So we are happy about that. As far as gaming is concerned, we feel that the graphics processing unit has not been stabilized, is not working properly, or is already under too much load with the full HD display to be able to run games uh, like Nova 3, uh, like Asphalt 7. They work. And if you've not played games on any other device, you'll probably be very happy with those games. But if you have played them on any other device, especially the way we play games, we've tested them out from every device from 5,000 rupees all the way up to 40,000, 40, 45,000, even 50,000 rupees, and we've seen them work really well. So on this device, games don't work really well. They are shoddy, they're jittery, uh, they slow down. And so that is something that we would like users to know. It does heat up from areas around the camera. This is something that we would like users to know. And if somebody feels otherwise, they're entitled to their own opinion. This is a device that we got from the company for testing, and this is what it performs like. If you don't like our review, you're welcome to move away to another review and believe somebody else's word. But our opinion is for the end user. And if the end user wants to believe our opinion, then this is what the device performs like. So there you go, guys. This was our in-depth review with a little bit of ranting uh, on the new Iberry Oxus Nuclear N1. It's a great day-to-day -day device, comes with additional covers, performs very well except when it comes to gaming. So if you're gonna be gaming, this device is not gonna be for you. But if you're not gonna be gaming, if you're a casual gamer, if you do it just once in a while and you most probably play Angry Birds or Subway Surfer or something like that, uh, then uh, this device will not be bad for you. If you have any questions or queries, if you have any further comments, please do leave them in the comment section below. We're not gonna be answering any hate questions. If you have any issues, please take them to your own forums. We don't care what you feel. This is our review. Do catch the written review of the Ivory Oxus Nuclear N1 on iGander in. Catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash iGAN. YouTube.com slash iGAN TV. For iGAN Networks, this is me, Vahad Thank you guys for watching.